Welcome to Monday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us for another week, week number nine of our series, Highway 316. We're looking at that very important revelation about the reality of God's great, wonderful, and intense love that He has for us, which is unconditional, unfailing, and inseparable. I tell you, there's not enough descriptive words in the English language, any natural language, to describe the kind of love that God has for us. Now, we're going to pick up from last week and go over this week and begin this week with James chapter 1. So let's go to James, the first chapter. Last week, we gave you a couple of very important, uh, very vital examples that I think tell us about the heart of our Heavenly Father. First of all, the the parable of the two sons that Jesus spoke, and we really centered in not only on the prodigal son, but the older son. And the older son received his inheritance the same time as the younger prodigal son. But he never actually received it. He never actually enjoyed it. He never, never made a withdrawal there, so to speak. He was still out in the field trying to earn and deserve and toil and sweat to earn that inheritance that his father already gave to him. Now, why would he do that? Because he has a total misconception about his father's heart. And that really played out when he got angry when his younger prodigal son came back broke, busted, disgusted, and his father <laughs> and his father restored him to full sonship and airship privileges and threw a party for him and killed the fatted calf. That really made him mad right there because he really did not understand the kindness, the goodness, the, 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 the unconditional love and grace that his father had towards them. And that's why he was still out there trying to work and earn and deserve it because he thought, he believed his father dealt with conditional love rather than unconditional love. But God, likewise, that's a picture of our Heavenly Father, deals with us according to unconditional love, not according to conditional love. I tell you, if God were dealing with, with us according to conditional love, like men do, like most of us are accustomed to, I tell you, we would never receive salvation. Jesus never would have come. Uh, we'd all be a greasy spot somewhere, okay? But the reason, the reason we're saved, restored, made whole in our lives that God has a good life in store for every single one of us, that we have an inheritance in Christ, is because of God's unconditional, unfailing love and grace towards us. Now, we also looked at Mephibosheth last week, saw a picture of God again there. Mephibosheth was lame because he was running away from King David because of a misconception that those around him had misrepresented to him and told him all these horror stories about big old bad King David, how, you know, that he was going to come get him and kill him. And so they took him out and he became lame through an accident while they were running away from David and ended up in Lodabar hiding out. And then he got to, so low in his esteem of himself when he actually approached King David, he said, "Why? what am I, your servant, that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? And see, that's the way a lot of people think of themselves. They don't even look at themselves as a dog. They look at themselves as a dead dog. That is the worst of the worst right there. But I can tell you, God not only wants to restore the stuff on the outside, He wants to restore your soul. He wants to restore your esteem and self-worth and value. Now that only comes when you receive His unconditional love for us and grace and begin to apply that to your own heart. But so many people are running away from God rather than running to God and receiving because they have the wrong conception, the wrong perception about God. And many people have misrepresented God, even religious leaders have misrepresented our Heavenly Father and His heart towards us in telling us He's mad at us, He's angry, He's out to kill us, steal and destroy. That is not the heart of God at all. If He wanted to do that, He would have just left us alone and the devil would have taken care of us. But no, He sent Jesus, His Son, demonstrated His own love for us that while we were still sinners and ungodly, He sent the best gift, His own beloved Son, to absorb that sin, to absorb condemnation and punishment for us, the anger and the wrath of God for our sake on the cross, so that we could like the barren, in uh, uh, Isaiah 54 verse 1, like we could like the barren could sing and rejoice and expand and enlarge the place of our tent dwelling and not just have that wrong 
perception of God running from him in fear all the time, afraid of his wrath all the time. But we know that God has brought us back, reconciled us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want to go over to, to begin with in this week, James chapter 1, James the first chapter, pick up just a couple of verses as we head into this week right here, because I believe this is going, this is going to kind of bring last week and this week together. But verse number 16 of James 1 says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Now, do you think it's possible for beloved brethren to be deceived? Well, yeah, definitely. He wouldn't have said that if we couldn't, all right? Just because you're a brethren, just because you're a beloved brethren, does not mean you cannot be deceived. Now, there's something specifically that he's going to mention here in the next verse uh, about the heart of God that we need to be, make sure that we are not going to be deceived about. See, this is what the enemy is really trying to bring deception into our life about. Right here, verse number 17. You ready for this? It says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation nor shadow of turning. Now see, that's telling us something about the heart of our God, the heart of our Heavenly Father. Notice that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. In other words, only an absolutely purely good God could give us every good and perfect gift. And notice it originates with God. It originates with our Heavenly Father. Now he, he's not just telling us All right, they're there, but he's not going to give them to you. No. He's telling us every good and perfect gift is from above, and notice, comes down. Comes down. So in other words, it's not just wait till you get to heaven, and then we'll get all the good stuff. No, notice that there are good and perfect gifts that are from above. They're coming from God, your heavenly Father, and they're coming down now, where we need it in the earth. And it's, listen, it's not just for your benefit. But God wants to use you as an advertising agency of His goodness, of how good He is and how good He treats His kids. i tell you what, I want to be one of those He uses in His ads, <laughs> all right? Demonstrating His goodness toward us in Christ Jesus. So I want you to see that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, is from above, and comes down, notice from, the Father of lights, wherein there is no variation nor shadow of turning. In other words, the heart of God has never changed. It's never even had an iota of change. It's never even had a shadow of variation or change in it. God, the good God, the unconditional loving God, has always been the same. Now, men, in the fall of man, has lost their ability to perceive God in truth and in reality, they've lost their ability to see the unconditional love of God. And of course, because of that, there's a lot of fallout from that. We've not been receiving the good and perfect gifts there from above that are coming down. And also, we like Mephibosheth many times are seeing ourselves as dead dogs when that's not the way we are, particularly as believers. As believers, God has made us a new creation in Christ. We're the workmanship of God as we're going to find out this week. That means right there, you're not a dead dog. You may look at yourself as a dead dog, but you're not that way anymore. You shouldn't be hiding out in fear, running away from God in Lodabar. No, God wants to bring you out of Lodabar and put you at the king's table. But notice every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, wherein there is no variation or shadow of turning. Now see, this is what the enemy wants to deceive you about. He wants to deceive even the beloved brethren about this reality of the Father's heart. That, first of all, he's a giver of good and perfect gifts, and he has good and perfect gifts, but he's never changed. Our sin, the fall of man, did not change the loving nature of our Heavenly Father. It changed our nature. It changed our perception. It did not change God at all. Now, with that in mind, let's go over to Ephesians, the first chapter. Ephesians chapter 1, and this is where we're going to start this week. I tell you, Ephesians should be one of your favorite books of the Bible. It, it probably will be before it's over with, because this is describing in here 
the kind of good things and good life that God has for every single one of us as believers. Not just in the sweet by and by, without argument, without any debate at all, the life hereafter in heaven is absolutely, we can say, going to be out of this world. <laughs> okay? <laughs> no pun intended, but no, it's going to be out of this world. It's going to be beyond anything you never think about. But you know what? God's got a good life for you now on the earth that goes far beyond, exceedingly abundantly above anything you've ever even dreamed about. Our big God has bigger plans and bigger dreams for you than you ever even thought about. Now, why, why aren't we receiving more, more of that? Why aren't we walking in more of that today? Well, it's because, again, we have many times a wrong perception of the heart of God. We're, we're still looking at God as being dealing with us according to conditional love, kind of like that older brother in the field. We hadn't earned enough, hadn't deserved enough, you know, hadn't done enough stuff. Well, that, that has nothing to do with it. We're all saved. We're all blessed. We're all, we're all in this good life because of God's grace and unconditional love. It's because of Him, not because of something we do or don't do. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 1, I'm just going to begin with verse number 1. Sounds like a good place. We're not going to read through the whole book of Ephesians. Don't get concerned about that. But verse 1 says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus, and faithful in Christ Jesus. Verse number two, it says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so many of the letters in the New Covenant start with that right there. Grace and peace. Now, he's not just, you know, just throwing words in there. Like, hey, how, how you doing? Howdy. You know, hope things are going well. There, God doesn't waste words. And so, these, even in a salutation, they're not wasted empty words. I tell you, God is in heaven, and He is looking upon us in grace and peace. And He says, grace and peace to you, to us, believers in Christ, from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's not anxiety, worry, fearfulness about His wrath coming upon us. It's grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ to all of us. I tell you, we're, we're going to do a, uh, an access road later on on the grace of God. I tell you what, that will bless you. You will not be able to sit still in that chair. I can tell you right now, once you get the revelation of God's grace and what, what it brought to our life. But that's for, another, that's for a, a, an access road, another series that follows this one. But see, he says in verse 2 again, Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now notice that this is past tense, not future tense. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Now, a lot of people say, well, see there, Pastor Tony, he's saying that these are spiritual blessings and they're in heavenly places. So in other words, we're going to have to wait till we get to heaven and to enjoy any of these. No, that is not what he's saying at all. If that were the case, then basically he could have probably left this out. We, we could just wait to get to heaven to, to see it and enjoy it. What he's telling you right now, he's already blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. In other words, they all originate with God our Father in heaven, and they come down, they come down on the earth upon us right now. Now again, there's, there's many blessings that we're going to enjoy when we get to heaven. They're reserved in heaven. But let's not just put it all off into heaven. Remember, James chapter 1, verse 17, we just read, good and perfect gifts are coming down they're not just staying in heaven. They're coming down. They originate with God. They do not originate down here on the earth. See, that's good news to, our, to us right there because sometimes all we see when we look around is bad stuff, not good things. But God wants you to look up and look to Him and see in His heart that good and perfect gifts, spiritual blessings, blessings originated in the spiritual realm, but not confined to that realm, that are coming down from the Father. They're coming down upon us right now to manifest in our life 
to make our life better, to bring restoration in our life and bring us the good life. I tell you, that's good news. And it's already ours in Christ Jesus. Well, I'm going to pick up right there tomorrow because there's some good things that we got this week. Man, awesome things this week that we have in store. So join us again tomorrow. If you like additional materials, go to TonyCowan.org. We will see you tomorrow.